All right, guys. Uh, can I get a mic check? Mic check. Two one two. Mic check. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and give it a couple minutes, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get on started here. Also, gonna go live in my voice channel as well. And then we'll give it a couple more seconds here to kind of go ahead and get everything started. Hopefully you guys had a great trading day. Um, today was fun. I knew, you know, I've been, I haven't been doing a whole lot to be honest, but just being in my seat all day long. Um, I haven't really got up much. You know, I had a little lunch uh, in between when I got out of my TBLT trade, um, but this uh this past couple of days I made it a point to really not go, get out of my seat much at all because this market I knew when we saw Mbot run was going to start heating up and it creates hope for a ton of traders and when you see that hope for a ton of traders they start chasing and um you know you get a recipe for lots of uh percentage gains lots of profits and that's what we've done in the past 3 days you know and that's just me not even trading Mbot. You know, if I was an Mbot, I could have been insane. But when you see that, you have to take advantage of it. So let's give it a couple more minutes here to let everybody kind of trickle on in. And then I'm going to go ahead and get started. One thing I do want to do is go get a glass of water. Um, and then we'll get started, guys. So give me one sec, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get on started here. So, got my glass of water and we're ready to go. <clears throat> so if you guys don't know uh, and are new to this channel, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the icon to alert you if I make new videos. I'd really appreciate that, guys. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on today. So, what I want to start with is I hope that you guys are all liking and subscribing to my channel, clicking the icon to alert you if I make new videos. Uh, I would really uh, appreciate that, but sorry, I might not get that all mixed up. But what I do want to get started with today is um, my big trade of the day, and that was uh, TBLT. Okay, TBLT was my big trade of the day, and... If we go ahead and look on here, I posted this in chat, but you can see uh, let's see where we got here. So I've actually had a couple winners on TBLT here. Uh, but I want to go over today's trade. So today you can see me getting filled here, uh, 30,000 shares at 398. I uh, don't know. Let's see, I set a limit buy there for four bucks. 
Then no, I got filled at 10.02 a.m. Eastern Standard. So that's 7.02 where I'm from, uh, Pacific Standard Time. So let's go over that. So my plan was on this trade, guys. Um, so that, that entry was right, right here on this dip. Is where I got filled, I think. Yeah. Well, 7.02 would have been right there. So, yeah, right on this dip, okay? And when I saw this kind of take a dip down, and I was like, okay, what my plan was is if we notice MBOT and we notice KTOV, you get those those dips in the morning right but when you get those dips in the morning they they haven't dipped a whole lot I mean MBOT didn't dip much at all for out of the gates MBOT dipped like on his first day oh, that's not even his first day so MBOT on its first day you know we dipped down to the 407 range from the 450 high so that's like 40 cents range but we're already up you know, almost 100%. So that's really just not a whole lot of range of dip m movement there. You know, I was trying to get filled in the three, you know, like the 380s maybe. three 390s would have been kind of a better area for me. But I never went, so I never got filled. And I never was able to chase that one. But this is what set the whole market trend on where we're at right now. Uh, the next day we had KTOV. And KTOV, this one had more of a dip, so you're able to get filled down in here. But since we had more of a dip, and since it looked really heavy, I didn't really get filled on this one. Um, and then I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable getting fills down in here because we were still 60 cents above, and I really didn't think we were going to get much continuation on the way through. Um, but at the end of the day, we got a hell of a continuation, and we ran a 280 in a matter of you know an hour or two. Um, so seeing this was like, okay, this is the reaction of MBOT in my opinion. This was, this was all the chasers. This was all the people in the market that were like, okay, now it's time to play. Now we're playing ball, you know, now, now we're not messing around. Um, and you know, we were up at that point, you know, I think it was almost close to 200%. Um, so I was looking at this point, I was like, okay, I'm not going to miss the next one of these. We might not have this huge move like this, but I guarantee in my mind, at least, I know from, from how long I've had experience, when we see something like this, when we see something like MBOT, there's a lot of people that are willing to chase in the market. In my opinion, this would have never happened right here, This this these candles right in here. These would have never happened without MBOT. Really, I don't even think we would have been up this high, but I'm just saying, this, this would have never happened without MBOT. This would have never happened without MBOT. Now we had MBOT, and this created this huge, what we call... A ton of traders who are all just wanting to make a lot of money, wanting to get rich quick, right? What the, the American dream, right? I mean, and that's when it's fun for me because I've been doing this long enough to know their mindset, their mentality before this happens, right? So now this confirmed that we were going to have some continuation throughout the week for me. You know, this was a confirmation move right here. So I said, you know what, the next day if we get something that moves like this, I'm not looking for this big a move, 200%. But if we do have something that looks similar with good news, I will be taking advantage of the dips. Now that we confirm. So what came along? Well, TBLT came along. And it actually had good news with a company called Menards. I believe they're kind of like Home Depot, Lowe's, something like that. Uh, but they, I believe they uh, launched some sales with them. But I couldn't chase, you know, I was going to go long pre-market, but I could have got long down in here, and maybe I should have. I just didn't think we are going to get, I was expecting on the runner today to go maybe 200%. I did not think we were going to get 300%, and we actually tapped 300% up here from all the way down into the 110s, 120 range. Um, or we were close to it at least. So we were already like, I was already, you know, felt like, you know, I was only going to get a move to like up here maybe. Um, and I thought maybe that would be a market open, not, you know, pre-market. But really on Robinhood, I couldn't have been filled here at 283, 284. That already would have been, you know, a, you know, close to a, you know, a 70% gain or something like that. But anyway, so I see this spike up. I'm like, oh crap, I missed that one. But... 
my mindset out of the gate was to wait for the dips on the open. And it's actually pretty impressive that this thing is already up, you know, from right here. It's already up 150%. And out of the gates, we got no pullback. We literally went from 360 straight up to 550 in one, two, three, four, five minute candles. Four, five minute, one minute candlesticks, okay? So that alone was impressive. Now, I knew at this point I wanted to wait for a dip. So this dip went a little bit farther than I would have liked. But I was like, okay, you know, the dip could potentially, um, you know, be a little bit farther because we're up so high. And I really didn't want that this price to get below the opening price. And we never really did. So that was kind of my key indicator to watch this thing. Uh, we tapped the opening price here, and that's where I took my first, uh, if you want to look here. Where are we at? That's where I took my first uh, 30,000 shares. Okay, so my first 30,000 shares right there were taken at 10.02 a.m. Eastern Standard, 30,000 shares at 398. So then I'm waiting for this consolidation, and I'm like, okay, you know, I want higher lows off of 365, and that's exactly what we got here at 381. We started to get some higher lows, and where do you think I added? 1012, which is right here. I added right there on this candlestick right in here. That's where I took my ads on the potential of higher lows, risking off this 365 mark. Realistically, I was probably risking 370 mentally, um, 372-ish range. I didn't want to get too much further than that. Um, but I was going to add on the next dip as close as I could to this risk off level, um, as I could. And so perfectly pulled back. I got another 10,000 shares right there at, uh, 10, 12 AM Eastern standard time. So right now I'm in 40,000 shares, about $160,000 position here on these dips. I'm actually pretty happy with my entries at that point. Then I'm taking another 5,000 shares here. Notice how each time I'm taking smaller size because if we flush out, I don't want to be that exposed. You know, I'm, I'm getting filled on higher position sizes, right? So the higher we go up, the less size I'm going to take because I don't, if we flush out, I don't want to have my average be all screwed up. I just want to have a little padding. Um, that way, if we do fly, I'm going to be paid for it. And so then... I'm right here. Let's see. So uh, I took my 5,000 shares, add here at 1037 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, filled uh, right here. Let's see. Sorry, let's click this. Where are we at? Yeah, so uh, you can see, you know, we're getting filled here at 5,000 shares. How do I? Why won't it? Uh... Oh, here we go. So there's my 5,000 shares, 10.30 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's scroll over. Let's back it out a little bit. And we'll go ahead. I don't want to mess this up, though. You guys can see, I hope. I hope you guys can see this, what I'm showing you guys. It should be pretty clear if you have HD and you're zoomed all the way in. You should be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, where are we at? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right here. Okay, so 10:37 a.m. Eastern Standard. I'm getting another 5,000 shares, and that 10:37 uh, a.m. Eastern, which is Eastern Standard, I'm Pacific, so don't get the time dates all mixed up. I'm gonna adding another 5,000 shares, 10:37, which is right in here, risking off this higher low here. We never got below this 384 mark. We kept holding. We actually triple bottom right there. I, I mentioned that in chat. Um, should be able to double click the title. Double click the title. I don't know what you mean by that. Double click the title. Should be able to double click the title to make a full screen. Okay, so how do I do that? So double click the title. I'm trying to I'm trying to go full uh, full screen and not screw everything up here. If 
you could help me things of Leon. You said you should be able to double click the title to make full screen and then double click it again to minimize it. That tablet 15D. Screw it. I guess I can just do it and then I'll save layout later. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. We're good. Okay, so um, you can see this is what we're talking about here. Um, and so 407, I'm getting filled here at 1037. So I got filled on this pullback right in here. Okay, this pullback right in here I got filled on. And then, um, so that was my small little ad there at, wait, no, 1037. Right there on that candlestick is where I got filled because I like this fact that so we sold off, but then we dogeed back up. So there's plenty of buyers down here to support these higher lows. Then we triple bottomed here at 390. And that's I mentioned that in chat. So if you want to go back, we'll go back and look. Triple bottom. Let's see if this comes up. Yeah, it's time stamped and everything. Perfect. So if you guys want to look here, here I say in chat, TBLT just triple bottomed at 390, 7:46 a.m. This is uh, 10, this is uh, not 9, 1036, 1046. So this is um, this is 10:46 a.m. Uh, also known as 1 1:46 or wait, what the hell am I saying? 10:46 Eastern Standard Time is the time I released this alert out in chat, I said TBLT just triple bottom right there at 390. So that made me really interested. You know, I felt like anything below 390 at that point would have broken higher lows number one and would have broken trend number two. So that was kind of my risk off, and now I'm I'm not risking a whole lot at all by letting the chart play out. So hopefully you guys saw that timestamp and my explanation in chat. Let's see if I can not be smarter than the computer here. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm gonna close that out. See if I can do it here. There we go. Um, and then I like that, so I got another uh, 5,000 shares again once I saw this triple bottom at uh, 10.42, which is 7.42 right there. Okay, 7.42, which is right in there. Another 5,000 shares. Okay, and so I've been in since all the way back in here, and I'm just adding to my position here, 7.12. 32 and 42, or 37 and 42 Pacific Standard or time, right? So now I have a total of 50,000 shares of this stock worth about uh, 200,000. So 160, 180, yeah, just uh, about 205,000 or about $200,000 worth with an average of 398, right? And so what am I thinking in this plan? I'm thinking, okay. First off, if we get a break below, you know, in this market, I knew that, um, you know, we were going to be able to hopefully see some continuation um, because this market is red hot right now. And there's a lot of people out there, you know, Oregon, California, you know, Washington, New York, wherever, all these traders that are sitting by their computers are now not forgetting MBOT, you know. Whether it be subconsciously or not, it might even be subconsciously, or they don't even—they might not even realize it, right? At all, they just—it attracts more traders. People sit down at their computer more often. They're willing to take bigger size. People might not even notice it, but I do. I notice when those things start to occur, and us being traders and us being, you know, having that mentality, right? It creates a lot more volume and a lot more volatility. And I'm thinking, okay. I'm sitting pretty here. I have an average underneath four bucks, right? I'm really at this point risking, you know, 10 cents a share for a potential of my hope was to get over high a day here and break out. I'm um, like Katov. But, uh, but you know, my, my sell target in my head was like anywhere from 570s to 6 range to kind of, you know, and I was thinking maybe we could even get as high as 657. But... <laughs> Since I've been trading long enough to know, I know what happened here. Um, so I've been sitting this all day, triple bottom here, kind of consolidation, consolidation, consolidation. 
a bunch of chop up and down, up and down. But we are still holding higher lows. Higher low here, higher low here, higher low here, triple bottom higher low, higher low on this doji, and boom, right? 600,000 or 620,000, 630,000 shares, 625,000 shares went through here. And what do you think that is, guys? This is a good teaching point. What do you think that is? On a low flow stock, this is an IPO. The IPO is high, was I believe 490. So we are messing with that, you know, that higher low. And so that's another reason why I liked it because if we got below, above five bucks, we were clear sky breakouts. The IPO had never seen those prices before. So that creates even more potential for buyers. But when you have 625,000 shares going through, and a stock is SSR. What do you think that is at roughly about, we're going to say a 440 average? First off, do you know how much money that is that went through right here on this one one minute candlestick? Okay. On this one one minute candlestick, I did 625,000 times an average of 440. Okay. You know how much money that went through on this one minute candlestick? It's gonna it's gonna be pretty, you know, crazy. Um it's literally um six or two point seven million dollars that went through on this one minute candlestick. Okay. This one minute candlestick literally ha you know has gone through here. Right? Just under $2.8 million traded, right? And what do you think that is? This, in my opinion, and I've, like I said, I've been trading a long enough time to, you know, at least understand this somewhat. This happens sometimes, and I was kind of hoping this would. And we halted. So the halt, not only did we get this huge volume, but then we halted. And then when we halt, then a lot of traders are like, okay, this stock's halted, so it draws even more attention, Right? So I'm I'm pumped right now. I'm up about 50 grand right here and this one 1 minute candlestick literally. I go from being up 5 6000 bucks about 2% to being up 25% or 20% and being up 50 grand, right? Truly truly amazing stuff that we live in. Okay? And so, you know, um when when that happens you know, you see the SSR, this thing had an SSR all over it, which made it even better for me to take a, take a long on because shorts, they can only take a short if they are uh, getting filled on the ask. And when you get filled on the ask, that means people are buying into your shorts. So what had happened was, is I think there was a massive shorter ex trying to take some size into some of these pops, risking off 450 probably, this, this, this top up in here, 460 range, right? So what happens is these shorts have to get filled, pushed up into. So buyers have to fill them. Instead of them getting filled in the bid, buyers have to fill them. So if I'm buying on the ask, then I'm filling their short, right? So shorts getting cut, filled into some of this, some of this. There's lots of dojis getting filled in here. There's probably lots of people trying to get shorts because you can see the doji candlestick, doji candlestick. But the key thing I want you guys to understand here, guys, is that, oh, yeah, these, getting, these shorts are getting filled right here, right? For sure. I mean, they are doji, 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 right? But at the same time, right, we're getting higher lows. And this is saying the buyers are still in control, right? The buyers are still in control. We have a higher low here. We have a higher low here. We have a higher low here. We have a triple bottom here on the one minute of 390. We have a higher low here, right? I really wanted to add something like right in here because we still held the higher lows with this wick, which means there's a lot of buyers still buying this stuff up. Okay. So when we see this here and we see these higher lows, all it's telling me is buyers are still in control. So shorts should be scared. Right. And I didn't, I didn't really give a shit about this. Pardon my French. Sorry. I didn't really care about this kill candle here. People were like, Oh, you know, this kill candle can, can ruin everything. And, and I, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just one person. It was lots of people that were starting to talk about this as well as they should, you know, this is something that I actually teach is a kill candle. Um, and you know, when, when you see a kill candle like this, which is a, a tap of, you know, resistance, 
And then we have another two, three million dollars being sold right here into this candlestick. Okay, that's something that you have to be aware of. But the reason why usually I would have sold out, but the reason why I didn't care was because of the market that we're in. Okay, and another thing you have to be aware of is when shorts become in control of something, or they think they have, then they're gonna get stubborn. They're going to say, hey, let's let's double down. Let's add some into this pop right here. And every time you see a doji candlestick with a clear resistance risk off, you know that the smart big, the, the smart people, the people that are taking big size, right, are the ones getting filled up here and up here. The people who have bigger accounts are probably usually the ones that are smarter and are consistently being profitable. So I'm thinking as a shorts mentality, the more opportunity, the more chart – um, a chart revs up for a short the bi the bigger the squeeze is going to be because the more shorts than that a ticker can um you know accumulate the more money that they're going to have to cover on the more money that's going to be bought the more money that's going to be transacted which is right here 625,000 shares with, which is roughly about $3 million transacted in one one-minute candlestick, guys. One one-minute candlestick and that one move right there. So the more it looks like a short setup, but then tricking them a little bit when you see these higher lows makes me even much more happy, right? And that's why I'm adding right here, right? And that's why I'm adding another 5,000 shares right here because I know... I know what the smart shorts think like. I have their mindset built into me, right? I know how the emotions can take over some of these people, right? The charts will tell you how emotions people how their emotions react, right? Charts can tell you when people get scared. Wow. Oh my gosh, I'm scared, right? Here we are. Oh no, panic sell, panic sell, panic sell. Maybe there's somebody on the stream that panic sold into this, okay? But you have to understand first market sentiment, right? Second, you have to understand are we holding certain trend lines? Are we still in control? Third, are we setting up for a big short squeeze because now that the shorts feel like they're in control, but not they're getting so stubborn they're not seeing higher lows, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, we have we have all these doji candlesticks, let's risk off four fifty and we'll call it a day, right? Should be able to break down. And honestly, it's not a terrible, you know, short, really. I mean, it's not a terrible idea. You're already up 300%, but the, but the people aren't understanding that the market sentiment can squeeze you out like nothing right now. There's a lot more people on the sidelines right now willing to buy stocks up 200, 300% because we just had MBOT go 5, 6, 700% in two days, right? There's a lot of people waiting on the sidelines to potentially buy these tickers um, that you need to understand. Right, so I'm waiting for people on the sidelines. I'm waiting here in this in this consolidation period for people on the sidelines to finally take over. Right, I'm waiting for this to happen. Right, literally, like that's my plan. And um, the market sentiment is everything when it comes to that, guys. Would I be buying with such big size when the market's not showing us that it has a couple of five, six? Two, three, four, five, six hundred percent runners. Why would I? You'll never see me do that. There's no point because you don't have people on the sidelines willing to buy, and you haven't seen tickers continuously break out intraday during lunch hours or during EOD like we have. And those people sitting on the sidelines are the people who can cause these kinds of squeezes, right? It comes down to emotions. It comes down to understanding both sides. It comes down to understanding level two. It comes down to, you know, really breaking it down and making sure, you know, um, you know, you can understand how both mindsets are thinking. And you also have to realize that a lot of the people in these in this trade right here, you know, buying are probably not necessarily and selling not necessarily as equipped as I am, right? The, maybe some of these guys have been trading for, you know, six months, maybe three months, maybe two months, maybe five months. I've been trading for almost three years. Um, I've been trading for two and a half years. You know, I have a little bit more experience than a lot of these people in here, and I understand how things can break out. I've seen thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of charts. I've seen how things can go parabolic. I've seen how things can break down really fast. 
I understand this is an IPO, right? There's so much that goes into some of these trades. But bottom line is this is the kind of price action that I was looking for. Short squeeze. In my opinion, this candlestick right here. So there were some people buying, right? But then the buyers triggered shorts to cover, right? Once we got above 430 and 435, that's when shorts probably got stopped out and stopped out very fast. The MMs got tripped up. And we had this huge volume circuit breaker hold traded about 3 million right here. Okay. So you could see me start to scale out. And I want to show you guys my scale. So my first scale was not that great. You know, I got filled at 475, but I swear to God, there was a bid there at 490, 495. But I was a second too late. I got filled on the unholds. Right. Then. I got another 5,000 shares at 490. I'm scaling some off. I'm taking some risk off because in case this flushes back down, I don't want to be, um, you know, I don't want to be included in any type of flush back down because what this could have happened is we had a halt and then we could have got, I've seen it where we get unholted and we're down in here, right? But we got unholted and we were still up, okay? Does that make sense? We were unholted. And we were still up on the day, right? Does that, I hope that makes sense. So when we got unholted here at 460 range, right? Or sorry, 4, 490 range, we got unholted, okay? Um, then we, I, I wanted to wait, you know, because sometimes we can flush down. And as long as we held the middle of this candlestick, I was going to hold most of it. But I wanted to take some risk off the table because, you know, anything could happen. And I want to be able to... Um, you know, understand, you know, that when, when you have a position, right, you don't want to have anything go against you. And when I'm up in a minute, when you're up in a minute or two, literally 25%, it's hard to take some off the table. Does that make sense? Um, you know, it's really hard to take some off the table when you're up 25, 50% in, you know, such a, like a one, two minute period of time, right? And I'll take some off every time when something like that happens. Because you should go ahead and pay yourself when you're right, you know, because what happened? Well, look at what happened. Literally 20 minutes later, we're underneath, right? If I, if I held, right, if I held down in here, okay, at 333, if I held this, okay, I would have been down just as much probably as I would have been up. That's how th fast things can change in penny stocks, guys. I can't preach it to you enough. I can't preach it to you enough, okay? That is how things can change so quickly. Short squeeze, and now this guy is probably covering, and now he's pissed off because he's wrong, right? And he was right at the end of the day. So much price action, so much volatility is how we make our money as day traders, right? The more volatile, the more excited that I get. Because every time you see me trade, I'm going to buy the dips. I'm not going to buy stuff like this. Because what happens? When I'm buying up here, what, I'm, not, I'm giving myself too much risk level. There's, I'm risking off 30 cents. Why not wait for something down in this range? And if it doesn't come, don't take the trade. Because you don't have, now you're up here, you're breaking out. But it's like that doesn't happen all the time. So why not just lower your risk, lower your stress, and take advantage of some of these dips? Meanwhile, okay, so I'm scaling some off here at 475 out of the hold. I didn't take any off into the holds, right? 5,000 shares here, 490, another 5,000 at 491, right? Another 5,800 at 493. I took some off at 506. I wanted to give it a chance to break out over 550, right? But we didn't. We weren't able to do that. Also, if you guys are new in here, um, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the icon to alert you if I make new videos. I'd really appreciate that, guys. Um, that would be, uh, mean the world. Um, I, I don't. I'm 100% free. You know, my chat's in the description below. Um, that's where I post a lot of my alerts and a lot of my not necessarily alerts, but a lot of my ideas per se, and a lot of what I'm thinking and certain price ranges and price action and stuff like that. So check that link out. But a point that I that I wanted to make today, guys, and I posted this in chat. Well, let's go ahead and finish this trade uh, uh, analysis really quick. So 
here I am. Take another 5,000 off of 506. I'm scaling out slowly. First off, because I have big size and I don't want to get filled, you know, with terrible execution. But another because I want to take some risk off the table. But if this thing starts to pop up, I don't want to be all out. I want to have some shares left. Because this thing could have gotten above 550 and squeezed to 6 and we halted again, right? So I was giving it a shot. So I got another. So I took about. Uh, about. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 21, 26, 31, um, 35. I took about 35,000 shares out of my 50,000 shares yeah. off with roughly an average of about a 492, 494 average, right? So right, right in there where that line is, okay? But I wanted to keep another 15,000 just in case we started to build higher lows and started to break out, right? But we didn't. I took another 5,000 off at 447, another 5,000 at 453, another 5,000 at 444, right? And then, um, you know, then I took one more trade on it, but I took small size because I didn't want to get any any size that... I didn't, you know, I don't want to give back any gains. So I took 10,000 shares, with, uh, which was a fifth of the size of what I took earlier in the day. I got long at 378 on a dip. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this trade because we started to perk up again, guys. What had happened here, okay? We started to perk up again. Does this make sense? So... Right in here, I was like, okay, this is probably over. And then we kept holding. We kept holding in this range. And this was kind of ugly. But finally, we started to get a little bit of a trend line here. Finally, we're kind of like higher lows, higher lows. This is what got me interested. You know, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, breakout, right? And my goal on that trade was to, um, you know, take a smaller size, which then, therefore, enables me to hold through a lot of dips and a lot of, you know, hesitation because when I have smaller size, I'm not as stressed or I'm not as focused on the price action. If I'm down 10 cents a share on $500,000 rather than, you know, $50,000, the, the price amount is a lot. So as much as I don't like to focus on the P&L, it's still hard for me to forget about being down so much. Be, mostly to me because I didn't want to give back any gains that I made on the day. Uh, but mostly I'm a percentages guy, but well, I didn't want to get back any of the gains that I made today, so I got long at 378, which I don't understand how I got long at 378. Limp by 37,000, and I got filled. Oh, and there we go. Okay, so somehow I got. Oh, I got some more shares there. Oh, because I tried to take a little bit more. I remember that. So I had 12,395 shares at an average of 377. Because you can see, you know, I got filled some there at 371 on that canceled order. Um, but so 13,995 shares. Uh, I set my stop loss at 359 to give it a chance. You know, that way I only risked about a thousand, two thousand bucks. And my goal was to hopefully watch it. Excuse me, guys. Break out above 550, get over six, and close strong. And I wanted to see, excuse me, a day two runner tomorrow. And I would have been okay with holding that overnight because first off, I have after hours for the first, you know, two hours of market open, right? But at the end of the day, or two hours of market close, um, so that way if they hadn't offered anything, I'd, I'd be available to be able to close out just in case anything crazy happened. But I was only risking 10,000, 12,000 shares, right? So, you know, if it goes down, I could lose all that and still be up on the day. Does that make sense? That's kind of my mentality there. Um, so that was my, um, you know, my big trade of the day, but I got stopped out later in the day and we had this huge flush. I got stopped out at 352. My stop was set for 359. Um, I'm not sure if it gives you more extended hours. I thought it was just what gold is what, you know, what I already had. Um, if you guys are new here, go, come check out the chat though. Uh, it's 100% free, um, literally 100% free. 
Uh, let's see here. So there's a free trial that you can click on right here. I'll go ahead and just post the link so you guys can come on in. Um, I do want to go ahead and go over some other trades. So a, a, a key point that I want to leave you guys, well, I'm not leaving, but a key point that I want to give you guys to put down in your notes. So this is not exactly right, but at one point in the day, right, I wanted to tell you guys this. So I made this post. Uh, where was it? Please tell me it was this. There is a key post that I wanted to go over for you guys to learn from. Uh, where are we at? Um, crap. Well, I'll go back to my Twitter and I know I posted it on my Twitter, so I'll go ahead and what I do want to go over is something that I posted. I posted it in chat, but that was in chat. So, okay. So what I wanted to cover is I had um, three winners and three three losers at one point in the day, right? My three winners on the day were, oh, let's see, where, where is it? TBLT, RBZ, Okay, that's not right. I gotta go to Twitter. Here it is, come on. So my three winners on the day... Okay, we're just gonna say two winners on the day and two losers. I know it was three at one point, but my two winners are TBLT, RBZ, right? I took uh, 50K on TBLT, uh, I think roughly 20K on RBZ, and I took two losses on PTIE at uh, 5K and another loss on OESX. So do you see how I took two losses, right? I took two losses and two winners, and I'm still up 60 grand, right? And why is that, you might ask? Well, the reason why is because when I'm trading, especially in this kind of market, I'm thinking my risk reward as at least 5 to 1, right? At least 5 to 1. Does that make sense? So when my risk reward is at least five to one, I'm thinking, okay, I'm risking this 10 cents here, right? This 320 to 310 for a potential reward of paying myself. I'm not gonna let myself sell until I'm up at least 50 cents. So 10, 20, 30, 40, this is where I'd be selling, right? So plan is, you know, entry 320, risk 10 cents. If I get below this, I'm out for a potential reward. So I'm either out at 310 here or I'm out at 380, right? So when you have that kind of mindset, it's like, okay, long, sell, long, stop out. You could take five or six trades and have one of them work out with that RR, right? And be break even on the day and take five losers and one winner, right? But... There's so much more that goes behind that because you have to know what's going to fall through, what doesn't, what the market sentiment is, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's not that easy. Um, so, you know, that's really the mindset um, that I want you guys to be able to have. Um, one thing that I also wanted to, to set you guys with is I'm going to be launching an educational series video, hopefully within the next month or so, maybe two months. And I took a vote in chat. I said I want to get a tally of who would be interested in this educational video. So hopefully you guys have checked that out. Um, you know, I haven't made a pricing. It's going to be about 15 to 20 hours long, roughly. Um, this is going to be the most in-depth video that I've ever gone in. You know, all these YouTube videos are nothing compared to you know, how deep and in, in-depth I go into some of these trades and some of the level two and some of the live trades and things like that. I want you guys to uh, be aware of as well. Um, and also, guys, um, I want you guys to be aware that, um, you know, a day like today uh, doesn't always happen. Um, you know, it's not always like this. But um, when you see stocks that are running, when you see tons of people that are willing to chase, you better sit down on your computer. When your girlfriend comes in and say, hey, I'm busy, right, this is the time, you know, if you're if – you're, if you're working, this is the time to be available during the market, right? 
I didn't even go to the gym today. It is Wednesday, so usually I don't go to the gym today. I'm going to go on a hike instead. But, um, you know, this is the time to be sitting down and being patient and waiting. Because even like a stock like VTVT, which I took a win on, this news was crap. But people just, you know, look at how much volume came in on this crap. It wasn't great news, right? So... We have 100, 180,000 shares on this first candlestick. So let's go ahead and do the math. Just on this first candlestick, right? Let's just go 150,000 times 270. That's already about a half a million dollars traded on that one one-minute candlestick, right? And I took advantage of this pullback. So I got filled at 277 and 279, or 275 and 279 for an average of uh, 279 for about, uh, I think, how many shares? Let's go back and look at this trade. I'm not going to go through every trade that I made today because right now I'm making a lot because the market is dead hot. But, uh, where are we at? Show more. So, here we are here. Me taking 20,000 shares at 276. I'm waiting for the first pullback, which is right here. Right? Uh, you know, I got the first pullback. Let's check in on life, see what it's doing quick. Debating on holding that one overnight. Kind of want to in this market. I probably will. Um, and then, um, so, 276 here, and then 282. So, I'm in 35,000 shares on VTVT, only because so many people are chasing right now. It's insane, you know? All right, Carrie. Uh, later, man. Have a good workout. Um, it's insane that... Um, Wow, I had no idea that Jack Bogle was uh, part of the trade. One second. I had no idea that Jack Bogle was uh, part of Vanguard and that he passed away. I'm I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's not good. Um, but uh, anyway, so here I am getting filled because I'm just going to risk off, you know, 270, right? So I'm risking like 9, 10 cents for a potential of people chasing. And what do we get? We get another 2, 3 million, maybe 4, 5 million dollars chasing in, in here. It's crazy to me that people are willing to chase but that's the market that we're in it's extremely you know easy in my opinion you wait for the spike you buy the first pullback and here we are so here I am scaling out here uh, my first sells at 304 301 three dollars 295 here I am selling up here at 311 I tried to get to take some off at 316 I put a limit sell in and I only got 173 shares that ended up being the high of day um, so I took the rest off at three bucks, but anyways, I mean, it's just crazy right now, the kind of market that we're in guys. So this, this is something that you have to be aware of and you have to just sit down and tomorrow I'm going to be just as aggressive tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to scale back anything, you know, we're still in a hot market, et cetera, et cetera. I might scale back a tad, but not much. Um, we're still going to find people chasing, this kind of episode kind of usually lasts for like at least a month. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still taking applications on my mentorship program, but I will say I already have probably over at least, it's getting close maybe to 2,000 applications, and I uh, am only going to be accepting probably 10 to 30 of them. So uh, it's going to be a super selective, super, super small group. So uh, just just know that. But you can go ahead and apply. That's fine. Um uh, you know, the more people that apply, the more, uh, you know, kind of, you know, I only want serious, serious people, though, who want to do this full time. You know, I don't want any people messing around. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? That's just not going to work. Uh, but people who are dead serious and want to do it full time, yes, you can apply to that. But, um, so yeah, that's just a quick trade there. And I locked in some money on that. Like, you know, right now we are just in this chase kind of market. I'm just buying things. Just because there's news out and they're low float sometimes, you know. VTVT's not a terrible, terribly a low float. 
But uh, it's just amazing what kind of market we're in, guys. You know, it's it's fun stuff. It's to me, it's easier money than it has been in a long time. I was trading mid caps for a while because we were getting, you know, in a lull. I was trading the short, the inverse leverage of the market. You know, I I was trading Roku. You know, I was trading um, SQQ, which is the short of the Qs. Um, I was trading uh, what was the other one? Not Roku, but uh, UJAZ. I was trading. But now, since these pennies are running, I'm just gonna I'm just focused on penny stocks again. You know, there's no point to waste my time in mid caps because we're seeing 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 percent runners on massive, massive volume, guys. So, um, yeah, that's really kind of today in a nutshell. Those are kind of my trades. Um, took two losers on PTIE, and uh, took a, I took three or four losers today. Um, this one just, I, I wanted to take, I took this one pre-market, hoping for a breakout, and then I just sold, like, way down on here. OESX, I took another trade on, on this one. And, um, I sold, like, somewhere in here, I think, or, I don't know, was it in here? Somewhere. Um, took another $5,000 loss. So, I, I take some losers, but I know my risk-reward, and you just gotta be aware of that. Um... If you guys are new, since we have 120 uh, live, I'd appreciate if you guys uh, subscribe to my channel, click the icon to alert you if I make new videos. We should be able to get at least 50 more subscribers. That way you guys can keep up to date. If you guys don't know, um, that haven't been with me for a long time, I took my U stock trade account, and I this account right here, I'll go ahead and log back in, from 1,000 to 1 million in 10 months and one week. Um, and now I'm working on my Robinhood account. I'm, I started with $1,000 on my Robinhood account, if you guys don't know. Uh, we can go ahead and go back. Where are we at here? So if we go back to the one year, and I think March 20, January, February, March, uh, it was like May 21st is when I started. And you guys can see, you know, here I am with 1000 and just, you're just, I'm slowly going to swing trades and overnights, 2000 uh, This is a, a, tr a reverse split that, like, totally miscalculated everything. I held a reverse split overnight and when it reverse splitted it like gave me that weird number but I ended up making 1500 bucks on it in real like realized gains. This was this was just don't worry about this. I never was up this much money. Uh, then we kind of went up to 5, 6, 7. Then I went on vacation in here so I kind of faded out 10 and this is when we started to take off. So uh, we're up, you know, 3000%, 6000%, 9000%. We kind of break down in here. I went one day. I went from ninety thousand all the way back down to forty-five or fifty thousand. So that was a hell of a hit. Um, but you can see we're just holding higher lows, higher lows. Now we're about ten thousand, twenty thousand percent, thirty thousand percent up in here. And now we're kind of breaking out. We're getting a strong parabolic breakout. Okay. Uh, this account. So we're halfway there on this one, and it's been about I think uh, seven months and three weeks. This account, it took me one thousand. I took a one thousand dollar account into uh, over a million in ten months and one week. You can see here this month we had a um, a, a month of five hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. That's when that's when YECO went crazy, and I played NCTY and made my biggest trade of my career. And then CCCL was another big trade. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, I don't use. <laughs> everybody gives me shit, but. I don't use Speed Trader. I don't use any of those fancy brokerages. I'm doing this because I, for one, I want you to show that you don't need all these Speed Trader, TD Ameritrade, all these fancy center point. You don't need any of that, guys. People are like, "Oh, well, Robinhood has terrible executions. You stock trade limited liquidity." You know, I'm just here to show you guys that you don't need one a lot of money, and you don't need any fancy. App. You know, I'm trading on my phone literally. I don't even use the desktop app on Robinhood. I'm, I do use Thinkorswim for. Um, f oh, I guess I'm holding the LIFE overnight, but I do use Thinkorswim for my charting. But I trade on my phone, and I literally buy and sell on my phone. Um, and same with you, stock trade. Sometimes I trade off my phone. So um, you don't need all these fancy. Center point, you don't speed trader. You know, will I upgrade to them? Probably because they probably will help me. I mean, they're better execution and, um, you know, all this stuff. They're better, um, you know, things like that. But I'm just sh here to show you that you don't need all these fancy brokerages that people always say, oh, well, you need to have, you know, this, this, and this. And no, 
this is the most basic platform you could possibly ask for as you stock trade. This is the most basic platform in Robinhood. They might have terrible executions. They might have stops, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. But at the end of the day, if if you know what you're doing and you can you can take your strategies and use it over time, then you can do things like this, right? I'm just a normal person. I'm not some crazy, you know, guy. I'm literally, you know, just a normal person. So, um, you know, I'm working on my second $1,000 to $1 million account on this account. Um, and then maybe I'll do it with like Speed Trader or something, although the, the, that'll be tough with the commissions. But the first, the hardest part for me is the first like 1000 bucks. I mean, I went, I got to $900 at one point on this account. Um, and that was tough for me because it's like when you get that low, it's like, you know, you got to make 20, 30% gains and it's tough. So you got to go through those lulls and stuff like that. But when I have this much capital and we get in a hot market like this, this is ha like, this is what can happen. You know, in one week you can be up $170,000 just in Robinhood. You know what I mean? Um, because I have more size and I'm only up 60% on the account. You know, before when I had smaller size, I've been up three, four hundred percent in one week before, but that's a smaller account. Now I'm taking size. It's harder to get liquidity, right? That's still a great week P and L wise, but I'm only up 57% on the week. So really I'm not like doing crazy. I'm just keeping it average, right? Um, so someone asked me, um, you know, and I'll go ahead and answer. If you guys stick with me till the end, if you, if you, I'll go ahead and ask answer some questions towards the end here. You guys got to stick with me. But someone asked me, do you use trade ideas? And the answer is, um, yes, I do. And that's something I go over after every, uh, you know, analysis that I go over. Um, but I go over it because I, I truly, you know, this is what truly does help me. Um, and like I say, I'm here to help you guys. Um, you know, I'm here to help you guys be the best traders if, that you can be, you know. The reality is I don't need to be on here going over this and, you know, uh, you know, trying to help you guys learn how to trade. That's just me being honest. I don't have to. I could just go out and I could be on a hike right now. And really, I should be on a hike 30 minutes ago. But I honestly do this to help you guys be better traders. And I don't, you know, you can believe me or not, um, but at the end of the day, I remember what it was like to not have a mentor. I never had a mentor. I never had someone tell me, you know, or show me strategies or show me ways on what works for you and show me proven history over months, years at a time that that really works um, for someone, right? And I stay this transparent as possible because, you know, I want you guys to really understand that this can and and will happen if you guys put in the time, right? Um, you know, and one of the things that I attribute my success to is just having a proper scanner, right? Without this scanner, guys, I mean, I, you know, what are you going to do without a scanner, right? I mean, I, 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 I truly want you guys to ask yourselves that. What are you guys going to do without a scanner? I, I really have no clue. This is one of the first things I looked at when I started trading because... I can't, you know, sit on a thinkorswim and I can't literally, you know, look at a stock. This thing looks at thousands of stocks in milliseconds. I can't do that. I'm not I'm not a robot. You know, I can't go through everything in milliseconds to sort through things and try and find tickers. You know, I just can't do that. No one can. You can have a chat room full of 100,000 people and still not be able to do what scanners can do. And that is find ideas that work under your strategies, right? And yeah, it might cost a, a good amount. But, you know, is is $500, if you're taking this, I will say this, if you're taking this dead serious, if you are wanting to do this full-time and you truly aren't, you know, trying to work a full-time job, then $500 for a investment, which is a one-time purchase, is not anything, right? Yeah, I mean, it costs, it's like anything in life, guys. When you go through life, what is the thing that you find? You go to a grocery store, and what do you expect? You have a product, you want it to live, you want to eat healthy, so you buy the product, and therefore, you're eating healthy, and it costs money, right? It's just life, you know, literally. It's, there's no way around it. You know, you go to Costco, you want some tires, you need it, right? 
or else you don't have a car. You go buy your tires, right? Because you need it. It's something that you need. Well, if you need something in life or you want something in life, it's at the end of the day, you know, it will cost something. You know, that's just the way this world works. You know, you have and if you want to um do that, then yes, go for it. If you don't, that is your choice, you know. If you have a strong motivation in this, then 100% you should honestly invest in a scanner. And we, um, you know, like I say, if $500 is too much for you to invest in something to try and better your life, that honestly, I couldn't do without. I'm just going to be dead honest. I couldn't do without the scanner. And I know you don't want to hear that because that's just a typical sales pitch, whatever. If I was truly here to sell stuff, guys, I'd be selling you left and right on the uh, first of all, my chat room is 100% free, you know, which I should charge for, but I don't. I, you know, I shouldn't even be on here, right? I mean, I could go throughout other things that I could charge for, but I just don't, right? Literally, the only thing I charge for right now is j just a scanner. That's it. And there are other free things out there that you can use, like FinViz. Write that down, FinViz. There's things like a Thinkorswim scanner, but nothing touches this. And if you truly do want to, you know, um, you know, try and take your trading to the next level, this is what I did. Is I went out and I, you know, I have the premium yearly scanner. I've had it for two years, ever since pretty much I started trading. Because like I say, you can't, no matter how much you want to try, no matter how much you want to justify saying, well, I shouldn't get this or I shouldn't, you know, try this, we're human. I, we don't have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand eyeballs, you know, we don't have the capabilities on a robot that searches through the market every single day at lightning speed. We just don't have that, right? So all I'm going to say is that, you know, and also, people who created this, help me create the scan, um, they do get um, a, a partial revenue from this. So you're really just supporting normacnulltrading.com. Um, I don't charge for anything so that you can just support us. But, you know, it's just the community as a whole, in my opinion, should, you know, and there's a reason why I go over these every day is to show you that, you know, this is what helps, you know, it puts it on your radar. BIOC was therefore put on my radar early in the morning and this thing ran 106%, right? And if you're seeing it on your radar, you're taking advantage of the dips and you have about 30 minutes to take advantage of it, which is something that I would, that's how I trade. I see it on my radar, I wait for a dip and I'm in at like what? That's uh, 170, 175, right? So that's the, that's the true capabilities of a scanner. Now, you're not always gonna have the right, you know, ideas that pop up, but if it fits under your strategies, you know, and once you get, you know, uh, capable of understanding how the scanner works, um, you know, usually, you know, that that's that's what I do is I wait for pullbacks. Now, not always, but this is just one scan, okay? Um, you know, first alert on our volume scanner at 180, right? That's just insane. It's just insanity, right? And I'll, I'll go over more, you know, I can't, we have a full library full of how our scanner works, literally in our room here. You can just scroll through them. There's a reason why I put these out here to show you guys how they work. Now, do they all work this good? No, they don't. But these are just some of the highlights that were caught. And there's just, you know, I can go on and on. We put them in there every day. And we have a video for you guys to understand how to use the scanners, how to set them up. Super straightforward. Okay. Um... But anyways, so, you know, and I'll go ahead and go over another scan that we had today. And this was on our Normac Null Low Float Momentum scan, okay? So, you know, one thing that you do have to know is that you have to have two things in order to be able to sign up for the scanners, okay? Which, you know, I'm just going to tell you, you know, what I do and what attributes to most of my success is these scanners. I mean, just, that's just the truth, you know? I, I don't, I'm an entrepreneur. Why would I use something that doesn't help me, Right? Um, but I'll go ahead and post this for you guys here to get you guys to, uh, you know, go to this correct spot. So I just posted, not only did I post the settings, but I also posted the, posted the scanner. So 
click that link. It's also the eight dollar and eighty eight cent trial. You can click in the bio. You can click that link too. First off, you have to subscribe to Trade Ideas. So if you use the discount code CAM15, all caps, CAM15, all caps, I'll put it here. This is the subscription that I have, CAM15. I apply. You save $340. Trade Ideas, you know, I went to their uh, conference in October. They work with me in order to give you guys in the Normac Mill Trading community the best discounts. I don't know if they give us to everyone. I'm not 100% sure, but they gave me that code. For you guys, for the Norma Knoll trading community, it was very nice of them to do that. So you could save some money like that uh, just to start off. Um, you can do, if you can't afford the yearly, which is where you save the most money, especially with the discount code, it's what I'd recommend. Only if you take this seriously and only if you're going to be trading for a long period of time, right? If you're not going to be trading for a long period of time and you don't have confidence that you will, why would you get the yearly? Just take it month to month until you, whether, until you make your decision, right? That's just an obvious answer in my opinion. Now you can do the the cheaper version, which is the 118 a month. But if you use the discount code, it'll save you a little bit of money, right? Hundred, you'll save 17 bucks. It'll be 100 dollars a month. But what I want to get into is the scanner settings. Okay, the scanner settings is a one-time purchase. So once you purchase Trade Ideas, you go here. This is the exact setup that I use. Uh, you get some add-on scans. So you know you get these this scan, this scan, this scan, this scan all included, right? Um, but then you also get add-ons in this all-in-one. You get a gap up and gap down scan. You get a low float watch, or you get a social media scan. You get a float rotation scan. You get a whole resume scan. And I believe there's one other scan that comes with it. Um, you get all that for, you know, obviously the pricing there. Um, that's the best deal, and this is exactly what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. First thing I do, turn on my scanners, look at the gap up and gap down scans. That's the first thing I do immediately. So um, once you you know you go here, you click purchase, you put in all your information. Um, then you have you already have the trade idea subscription. You plug that in. Literally, it should take you two minutes. You sign up for trade ideas. You get an email in like one minute. You put that uh, link into the subscription, and you're done. So it's as simple as that. I put both links in the description there. That should be simple to understand. Um, I can go over questions on that uh, later. But um, that's really you know. And here's the last scan that we had. Uh, on uh, Mbot, we had it at 219 on our first alert, uh, and this was this was Wednesday. Um, and <laughs> this was I think before the run, but still, um, yeah. So, anyways, guys, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead and look at some of yesterday's scans, some someone just asked about that. Yeah, yesterday scans. I'll go ahead and, and um, show you yesterday and what it came up with. So if I can just get there, I'll show you guys yesterday. So here is here's the, a different version of our scanner here. So we have uh, Ktov was on our washout long here at 164, and then we ran to 78%. So this is our washout long or low flow washout long. This is something that catches the dips, right? And then here is our, uh, I think our dip by scanner. Oh no, this is our, sorry, same scan. Here's our uh, washout long scan on um, VHC at 428 here. Ran 50% from our washout long scan right there. And then our last scan from yesterday that we that we'll show is MBOT at 990. We ran 96% from our first alerts on our Normac no low flow momentum scan. Here's our 990 alert, 992, 993, 997. We're just getting a bunch of hits here in the first 30 seconds of market open, catching that alert. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, guys, you know, you can do what you want. If you don't feel like this is going to help you, so be it. I will tell you, though, that, you know, I don't use very many tools, but what I do use is trade ideas, you know. Another thing that I might use is equity feed coming up here, but um, that's because I got it for free and I want to try it out. But really, our parabolic volume spike scan seems to be better than the news half the time, the news alert. So, um, yeah. So, uh, RBZ was a tough one today. Uh, this one I was hoping was going to run off sympathy play, and it did run. Uh, I got long, I think, with like a 170 average, 175 average. We ran all the way up to 250. Um, but, um, this thing, you know, sold right back off and 
since uh, TBLT didn't continue to go, we didn't get any continuation. We came back above two here and got a VWAP for a second, but this is only going to run if TBLT ran uh, through high a day, and it never did. So um, this is an IPO sympathy play that uh, started to catch early in the morning. And it was pretty much the same price range and print, same chart, too, if you want to look at RBZ compared to TBLT. You know, it was up at 450 was the high there. What an ugly candle. Um, and then we were down here to start the day at like 150, something like that, right around where RBZ was. So closest IPO th sympathy play. Uh, that was a tough one in the morning for some. Hopefully not a lot. Got trapped. Some, this can happen, though. It's a lot of volatility, a lot of, a lot of price action. A lot of, it can get trappy. And you gotta be, you got to be quick. you got to know what's going on and this is a lot of people chasing right in here right so um, but anyways any other questions guys I'll go ahead and answer three to five questions because I know a lot of people are probably gonna want to ask me questions Let's see if I close this out here Any other questions, guys, before I head on out? Been on here for over an hour. My biggest trade ever, I'll go over quickly. Oh, crap, I just closed Tinkerswim. Could you give us the Oh, you put questions. Uh, Ryan, I. That's a good question. Um, we have some back testing on that, but I don't have the. Uh, I don't have the um, percentages up. I know that our washout long and our dip buy are the, I believe, the more accurate runs. I think with like 80%. But that's under certain criteria, like 2% stop, 4% gain, or something like that. Uh, let's see. who. So I got three questions in the question room. How can I invite another member? Uh, that should be easy. Uh, mentorship program is on the website. Where do you get your news? Uh, I use the parabolic volume spike scan. And TOS. Here's just some of the uh, back testing done on our dip by scan here. You guys can see it's just tons of, of back testing. It goes on and on and on and on and on. I mean, you guys, you know, you guys don't realize. I mean, we've put in probably over hundreds of hours, if not thousands of hours, in these scans, and um, you know, this is like, you know, why would I, I've seen, you know, at least 40 to 100, I'm going to say 50 to 100 scans, different scanners out there, and I've seen most of them, right? So it's not like we just lollygagged. I mean, if someone else had a better scanner, I would be using it 100%. Like I said, I'm an entrepreneur, and, I'm a, and I want to be the best trader out there, so I'm going to use the best tool. And this is, you know, what I think the best scanner that I've been able to and with help create so it, it, I mean this is just this is the volume scan right just a ton of back tested entries it goes on for thousands and thousands of back tests right so um, you know I guess that's the biggest point I want to kind of share with you is that um, why would I not use somebody else's <laughs> um, scans if it's better than mine and I've seen tons of them tons of professional traders scanners but at the end of the day, if mine's better than theirs, then I'm going to win, right? So we put in a ton of time, and we've tested it to other scanners, other people's scanners as well. So, and I haven't been able to find anything better. Okay. 
Sorry, my finger swim is closed, so. I'm thinking of buying one of your scanners. I'm just wondering if I if I buy one, can I have it on two different computers? Yeah, you should be able to. You just got to load the platform. Yeah, you should be able to. Should be able to load on both computers. The login is what matters. I mean, I've been able to do that, no problem. So, yeah, cool. Uh, oh, really? Okay. So, somebody just informed me you can only do it on one computer. Okay, my bad. Well, I feel like, for some reason, I feel like... Um, I've used it on my laptop, and then I've also used it on other laptops and another computer, I think, with the same login. So I think as long as you have the login and it loaded, you can just log in. But that's that's what I can remember from what I've used, but I could be wrong. Oh, yeah, you can't have... You can't have it on both computers at one time. If that's your, idea. I'm thinking. One of your scanners. I'm just wondering if I buy one, can I have it on two different computers? So like on my laptop and my desktop. So my my inference of that was, you can have it on both, but not at one time. Yeah, just not at the same time. Exactly. So you can have it on both, but not at the same time. Correct. Uh, as a small, so the scanner, uh, I tried Ranger, uh, but I've had problems with some screen share issues, so I haven't been able to get that back up. How much? Um, I've never written a strat, like I've never written script. No. Colton Hicks, I mean, the washout long and the dip buy can potentially be decent for um, swing trades. But it just comes into putting the time in and understanding what looks like a swing and what doesn't. You know what I mean? Swing trades are tough. How much faster is a scanner compared to others? Um, I mean, I can't tell you exactly, but I just like ours, especially with the washout long and the dip buy. Not, not many people at all have certain criteria set up for washout like uh, sell-offs and um, dip buys and, you know, the price action going down set up. And the parabolic volume spike scan I like because it catches news before or right when it comes out because there's people loading up and it just has a huge spike. It's like this huge volt of energy and it pops up immediately. So that's what I use for my news and it works out great. My favorite long-term stocks, you know, NBEV, I, I was in at like 338 and I sold at like 610 for like a 70%, 80% gain. That's one that I've been looking at longer term. If everything works out for them, man, that thing could be huge. Um, I also think that CEO likes to hype things up a little too much too, and that's why I kind of got a little worried. But um, I don't know. Long, my favorite longer term, there's lots of them. You know, GE's at a, a decent rate here. Um, you know, we're, I don't know, there's another one. Um, I really like Nike because uh, as, uh, I can go into that for hours, but um, yeah. So again, some some other scans. We got four percent plus edge on alerts minimum. Sometimes other scans will pick up them up way higher than ours, like t ten to twelve percent. But it all it all varies. How did you go about PDT? Uh, so I just had to be aware of it, and when I'm my first 1,000 to 25,000, I just had to be aware, and I would swing trade a lot more, like intraday, or I'd overnight a lot more, because that doesn't count as a day trade. LIFE must be selling off after hours a little bit. All right, guys, any other questions?
I should be heading out. I need to go on my hike. Daylight is not too much longer. You guys messaging me, I'm sorry. I, there's so many people messaging me uh, that it's hard to keep up. I do my best, but man, has it been, you know, it's hard to trade and keep up with all the messages. So I'm doing my best. Bear with me, guys. Um, yeah, we have a video here. I'll post it right here. This video kind of explains the uh, scanner. So click that. Wait a minute. That's not the... Sorry. Click this. Favorite place to hike. One of them is Poo Poo Point, for sure. But... Alright guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the icon to alert you if I make new videos. I'd really appreciate that, guys. We will see you guys tomorrow. Great week. Up already in, in three days. We're up close to 160,000. Um, let's keep killing it. You know, don't... But one thing I want to leave with, I shouldn't leave with that, is just look at your percentages. When, if you want to leave us something, if I want you to leave us something, and it is, don't look at my gains. Don't look at all that. Look at percentages. Okay, that's it. Don't worry about... All these crazy numbers. If you take away something today, check out the scan, number one. Number two, look at percentages. Don't look at numbers. Don't look at any of that. Just play percentages. 3% risk, 10% reward, right? 3% gains. You know, I don't care if you have 10 bucks, 5 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks. Percentages is what matters, okay? All right. Cheers, team, and go Ems.